All right, I want to do a quick uh, summary on a Smith & Wesson uh, Model 69. This is the Combat Magnum, 44 uh, Magnum. And uh, I picked this up close to a year ago, but just haven't had a chance to get out and uh, uh, use it at all. Uh, it's on an L frame. Uh, it's five shots and uh, fits my uh, rather small, girly hands uh, fairly well. Uh, I had taken it to the range and shot uh, three rounds to it. And it was PMC um, full um, copper jacketed bullets. And what was happening, I'm trying to get this in here where you can see it. On the third shot, it just completely and totally froze up. And what had happened, and I don't know if we're going to get down in here, but if you look right up here at the top of the um, barrel, as the round left the chamber and went into the forcing cone, it was stripping off parts of the copper jacket. And a large piece got wedged right in here at the, at the top of that forcing cone, um, just below the top strap and right above the um, barrel of forcing cone there. And uh, it, it took a while to get it out. So I contact Smith & Wesson and they immediately, while I'm on the phone, they send me an uh, email with a return label uh, through FedEx. So I thought, well, this is going to be easy. So I sent it back to them and uh, waited around for about uh, five weeks and uh, never heard anything so I called to check on it and the lady said oh no oh no no you're gonna have to wait a minimum of two months before you're even gonna get around to it so this was uh, right after Thanksgiving I sent it in and um, I finally got it back uh, first week of February so <clears throat> I did take it to the range shot a couple of cylinders through it and it did fine that's one of the things about this L frame is uh, you can buy a, a box of 50 rounds and it's going to last you uh, two or three trips of the range because it's after uh, 10 shots uh, started to have a little bit of um, sting in, in, in the, uh, my palm there. It's got quite a bit of uh, recall to it. Now what they said they did to fix it was they said they uh, um, made a repair to the yoke and then also uh, said they cut the forcing cone back. So. Uh, little disappointed in their communication after the fact. Never received any uh, type of email or anything from them saying they've looked at it, they figured out what the problem is, and um, on the uh, re return of it, I, I actually only got a notification from FedEx saying that I had a package on its way. Smith & Wesson gave no correspondence whatsoever, so uh, I give them an F as, as far as customer communication goes. Um, the good thing is uh, I didn't have to pay shipping either way, so that is a positive. Uh, I've sent, uh, had to send back a Caltech one time, and I did have to pay shipping there, and they paid shipping back. So, and if you ship a gun, it's it's not cheap. Uh, you're talking 70, 80 bucks uh, typically to go through uh, FedEx because you, you you know you got to ship it uh, to second day air. Um, but at any rate. Um, the little sheet that it came back with was just a little small thing, two little notes on it said uh, uh, cut forcing cone and um, made a repair to the to the uh, yoke arm and that's probably from where I had to force, I probably did that damage from having to force the uh, uh, cylinder uh, opened up to get the uh, other two live rounds out of it before I could ship it back to uh, Smith & Wesson. Um, now it seems to be okay. Um, Got a little bit of drag and rub on the cylinder to the frame right there. Oops, sorry, not in, <laughs> not even in the frame. A little bit of gra drag right here between the cylinder and the frame. Uh, it's basically a $750 handgun. You would think you would have a little better quality and attention to detail, but that's not the case. Um, certainly not uh, Smith & Wesson of the past uh, as far as the quality goes in my opinion. Now trigger, trigger is very smooth. I'll give them that. Single action, nice easy, cool, uh, it's like a pane of glass breaking. I mean it's pretty pretty easy. And then again on the double action. And I'll try to throw in some footage of uh, popping a few rounds off at the range after I got it back.
You want to try this one, honey? Yeah, go ahead. That's, that's what you just got in? Yeah. So just go ahead and keep going. I can do that one. We have a, we have a couple of 22s outside. Ooh. So anyhow, I just want to give a, a point out here on it was... Uh, uh, at least on my specific gun, was uh, trim it off part of the shell and actually cause it to to uh, force where you couldn't cock it, you couldn't do anything. I mean, it was, the gun was unserviceable at that point. So if you buy one of these for uh, bear protection or something like that, make sure you put at least a box of ammo through whatever you're going to be carrying uh, to, uh, you know, I guess vet it and make sure it's going to work before you put your life on it. Me, I just bought this more as a toy. I've got the uh, Ruger, um, I think it's a Deer Stalker. It's a 44, uh, 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 44 Auto Magnum. And um, I just wanted a handgun to go with it so that the uh, cartridges would be interchangeable, make it easier if I was out hunting pigs or something. So that's really all I got this for. I'm here in Texas. We don't have too many bears here, uh, at least in my area of Texas. <laughs> At any rate, that is it. Uh, can I recommend the gun? Uh, yes. Um, just make sure you vet it and uh, try it out before you actually, um, and, and you know, get it out there and put your uh, trust and, and faith into it. Of course, you should do that with every gun that you ever purchase. But uh, I know a lot of us that don't uh, don't always do that. So, uh, any questions on it? Uh, just put them in the comments down below. All right. Thanks for watching.